Blue Nun's probably Shut gonna... up! You are the indoctrinated one! You! Have you ever heard of the name Euclid? Spelled E U C L I D? Yeah, so. Hello, folks, welcome to the fourth episode of Hard Talk. My name is Rifat Bari, a freelancer with Bari Science Lab. Today I'm going to be interviewing Shiborno Isaac Berry. He's a world renowned physicist who has been recognized by many world leaders, including uh, President Barack Obama as well as uh, President Drew Faust of Harvard University. So, uh, Mr. Berry, thank you for uh, being with us today. No thanks, I know the answer. Okay, well, uh, today's topic is who invented calculus? Uh, Isaac Newton or Excuse God's Quite Lab? I'll keep that in mind next time. But I think Godfrey Leibniz is the true inventor of calculus. I repeat, Sir Isaac Newton is the true inventor of calculus. Period. Ten simple words. And I repeat, Godfrey Leibniz is the true inventor of calculus. Period. That okay. Sir Isaac Newton is the true inventor of calculus. Okay. Uh, before 60, in fact, we can split the world into two parts. Before 1642 and after 1642. So before 1642, uh, everything was dull and dark. But after 1642, everything was bright. Uh, do you know why? Do you know what happened in 1642? Yeah, Galileo died. Sir Isaac Newton was born. And then, in 1663, when he was only 21 years old, he was relaxing under an apple tree, when suddenly, bonk, an apple hit his head. Then he looked up at the sky, and he saw the moon. He uh, imagined two objects falling parallel to him, an apple and the moon. Then he asked a, a great question. If an apple falls, then the moon fall? He, uh, wrote, uh, he came back home and wrote this hypothesis down. If an apple falls, does the moon fall? This has been one of the greatest hypotheses to and ever be wrote a da deal by a member of the Homo sapiens group uh, ever since we separated six million years ago from literal monkeys. You calling me a monkey? Don't go off topic, okay? <gasps> oh, God. Well, first of all, I don't want to embarrass you, but you are wrong for a million reasons. But I will only list three. Number one, Leibniz is the true inventor of calculus. Because we still use his notation to this day. Shut up! I didn't even finish my own point. Okay. Solve this falling moon problem uh, with the math. But he, the uh, math of his time wasn't so advanced. Uh, so, do you know what Newton did? He gave up. That's it. Ah, uh, he didn't give up. He, he two years later, in 1665, uh, he invented calculus to solve the falling moon problem. And not only the falling moon problem, he used it to solve the falling moon problem, then write the laws of optics, then write the laws of gravity, and the laws of motion, and to lay the foundation of physics. And then he turned 26. Well, uh, there are a million reasons why you are wrong, but I don't want to embarrass you in front of our thousands of viewers. So. Let me list only three, okay? Number one, Leibniz is the true inventor of calculus because of notation. To this day, we still use Leibniz's notation in integral and differential calculus. Not because it's hard, like Newton's fluxions, but because it's easy, it's practical, and it's efficient. Using Newton's method would take you hundreds of years just to write a few simple equations. Have you ever even heard of Newton's notation? Notation. Every single student who ever took calculus because they know how easy it is to use calculus with Leibniz notation. 
Oh, I love Live Meets Notation. That's how good it is. Number two, Live Meets published almost a decade, nine years before Newton published uh, his books on calculus. And we have no evidence that Newton even thought about calculus before Leibniz published his, uh, his uh, papers. And last but not least, number three, Newton embarked on a 17th century smear campaign in an effort to destroy Leibniz's reputation as the man who invented calculus. In fact, I don't blame you. You're just like millions of other calculus students who are a puppet of Newton's propaganda. Shut up! Yeah, so? Did you know that he published a book called The Elements? Yes, yeah, a book of geometry. So what? One of the uh, elements of his book was the Pythagorean theorem. Just because Euclid pub uh, published the Pythagorean theorem doesn't mean it becomes the Euclidean theorem. Leibniz published first doesn't mean that he uh, got the idea first. But just because Newton didn't have any ideas, does mean that we can say that he did not invent calculus before Leibniz. We have no evidence he even thought about calculus before Leibniz published his paper. Okay, let's say I supposedly believe that this Gottfried invented calculus. Newton had five reasons to invent calculus, but what for what reason did this Leibniz invent calculus? Huh? I'll tell you all the reasons. There are hundreds of reasons. There are hundreds of reasons why Leibniz invented calculus. But I will only list 10 reasons why he invented calculus. Number one is... Um... 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 Well, because you don't accept me as the winner, let's turn to the audience. Who won? Who lost? My name is Rifat Bari and comment below if you want to support me. My name is Amorna Lainet Fairy and comment down below to support me. So I can win this debate and I will prove to this freely and so that I am the one, that I am the winner. To Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science, especially programming.